So um, the hop is a technique that I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate what it is. John's bull rushing me. Uh, we're not getting into sets or strikes, but this is more counters. So if I have my hands with John, he's got his hands inside, and he pushes me back. I'm hopping, I'm hopping my feet. I'm resetting my feet. What you see a lot of times guys are doing, this is where they're wrong, um, or it's not optimal, is they're, they're, they're not hopping, they're actually kind of propping their feet. And when we talk about hopping, it's really about bringing your hips through. Because what I mean by propping is here, here. What happens when I'm in this position? John can pull me. So that's something that we want to make sure we can correct. Um, so we'll talk about the, the actual pass pro. It's probably the number one pass rush is the bull rush. It's the most common. You know, if you get subjected to that a lot, you're going to see it a lot. So if you, know how, if you don't know how to stop it. We're not, we're not so much interested in, again, we want to defeat it, but also we want to punish the guy for doing it to us. So we'll show you a little couple little add-on techniques that hurt and uh, to discourage that kind of thing. Alright, so uh, right now, sorry John, but we're going to ask the, we're, we're going to show you the mechanics of the hop first, okay? So what I want to do is if I've got a base, I'll start like a left side player. The left tackle, John's got his hands on me, I shoot my hands high, he's pushing me back, watch out, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do the full hop, I just want to show you my feet, I'm not going to talk about my hips yet. I want my feet to skim the ground, I don't want to come high off the ground, this is a big mistake guys will make when they're hopping, so good, you know. By the time you hit the ground, your, your head's hitting the ground because you're getting run over. So we want to make sure our feet are skimming the ground. We want to also widen our base slightly. So if I have a normal stagger here and I'm getting, I'm taking on pressure, um, I want to make sure my feet, my base can widen a little bit. That does two things. It lowers our center of gravity just a little bit, gets our hips lower, which is important because we're going to deflect that force upward with the hop. The other thing it does is it allows us, we want to, our toes come out and then we're going to get our insteps in the ground. And as we land, right at the moment we land, simultaneous to the land, we want our hips to come to extension. So I'll show you that real quick. John's gonna push. Watch how I'm doing this. Push. So what I've done now is I've dropped my feet back. You notice my feet widen. What I want my tips to do, this is important detail, my knees are gonna come down and out. Watch real slow. My knees gotta come down and out. If my knees are straight forward, I'm, I'm restricting my hips. So watch, my, my knees are forward. Now I'm on my toes a little bit. Or my knees to go down, it's a coaching point. Okay, now, you guys all see that. One of the best ways to develop this for your players is if you get a line, we'll have an imaginary line right here. You put their feet on the line, their heels on the line, okay? In front of the line. I'm gonna start off with this position here. My, my head is in front of the line, okay? My heels are in front of the line. I want to end up with my, uh, I'm going to jump across the line, but you guys watch from the side. Okay? I want my toes behind the line and my hips in front of the line. So you're starting off, heels, uh, you know, heels in front, hips behind the line. You'll finish with your, uh, with your toes behind the line and your hips in front of the line. Okay? Just to see it from the side angle. It's kind of a, it's a difficult skill to develop, actually. Um, you watch many players, they hop, they're not getting the most out of their hips. They're kind of doing a little bit, a little bit. And you want to make sure you're landing with your feet behind you. If I land with my feet underneath me, I'm going to get trucked. When you're hopping, you're probably not going to just finish the guy on one hop. You're going to do incremental hops. It might take two hops, three hops, but short hops. Don't go big hops, and you get run over, okay? I think that every play on pass pro, should end in a hop of some degree. Because they're going to always, if, they, if you stuff them, you got them, what's their last resort? Push you. So we're going to stop them with a bull run with a, with a hop. Now, the key indicators for the hop, we're going to teach uh, the hand fits, but then I want to talk about the difference between the hop and, and, and what, what indicators you would use this for. When the defender has his head and eyes up, good chance that he's got his hips involved, that's when you want to hop. His head's down, we're not going to give him, we don't need to help him out. We're just going to throw him to the, we're going to put him down and I'll show you that technique as well. Let's talk about the hand fits. Maybe I shot my hand, I got one hand inside here, one decent fit. John's got a hand underneath though. Okay, he's pushing, he's got another hand here. Well, I'm in trouble. Two hands are high. Now what I don't, again, what we don't want to do is lunge and lean. That's what every player, most players are going to actually try to do. We're going to refit hands one at a time. So if I'm a left side player, I recommend you refit your, your inside hand first. Try to address that first. So I'm a, I'm a left tackle. John's got an inside hand, he's pushing on me. Refit the left, the right arm first. Protect our inside, of course, our quarterbacks to the right. Okay? 
don't do the double windmill. <laughs> okay? You guys have all seen this one. It pushes back. <laughs> it's a problem. The other thing you don't want to do on the refit is you don't want to turn your body. We're really strong when we're square. And I can, this good visual here, if you guys are doing heavy squats, how strong are you when you got your shoulders like this? Not very strong. How, no. It's a pretty bad spot to be in. So why, why break yourself down? We want to break him down systematically as opposed to breaking ourselves down. So I want my shoulders as square as possible. And when I get my refit in, I want to do it nice and tight. No, no looping refits. Nice and tight like a corkscrew. Just a nice tight spiral. So what we do is we practice. John's got a hand on me here. You guys can see I'm going to rub. My thumb is going to rub. Or put the other hand on me. Watch my hand, rotate, circular, rotate, rub. Now, we talked about discouraging a bull rush. You can refit your hand like this, no problem, I can get a fit. What I wanna do is I wanna attack this guy where he's soft, where he's weakest. When he's got his arms extended, he's killing you, he thinks he's killing you. What's he susceptible to? An arm bar. Let's punish that. I don't need you hitting my quarterback, I don't need you trying to run me over all the time. I'm gonna make you pay and think about this next time. What I'm going to do is watch my, watch my arm. I'm going to come low to high and attack. I'm circling. Watch my thumb. See how it comes up this way? I squeeze his hand. I squeeze the armpit. I squeeze it, tight circles, and I lift and elevate with my hips. See very, that? Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. What happens is they stop pushing you pretty quick. Pretty quickly they stop doing that. Now, you don't have enough leverage to like, break his arm or anything, so don't worry about that. But we are trying to discourage this guy from hitting our quarterback. It's a safer approach. Not only is it uncomfortable. It's not safer for him. Well, we're not interested in that. Elevate the two to come up. We're elevating him. Now, if you think about the hop, what it actually does, you think about a boat on the water. It's like it's coming into, into the shore, and it hits, it hits the shore, and it starts to elevate. It runs out of water. That's what we're doing here. We're effectively lifting this guy. He's got nowhere to go. They're, the defensive line is strong, and their, hand, their feet are behind him. They're pushing, they're pushing, and all of a sudden they get up like to this position, they have nothing. That's what the effect of the hop will do. It'll elevate and deflect force upward, and we're going to do that systematically with our our, simultaneously, uh, our simultaneous hop and refit. We're gonna dig the hand in there. So we'll, I'll show you one time through. John's gonna give me a decent bull. So see, watch what I'm doing with my head. So you guys will talk about, now my players aren't using their hips. It's a weird little t trick, but throw your head back. What, ha what happens when you throw your head back? Your hips come through. So I wanna, I, you'll see me kind of throw my head back a little bit. I'll show you again. So three hops and you're done, usually. No, that, not always, because sometimes it's pretty big. So let's talk about that. Well, there's another couple add-ons we'll show. If you guys were here yesterday, you probably saw the hay bale. Some of you guys might have seen that. Great technique for all occasions. It's a refit. What I'm going to do is I'll show the hay bale. If I can get this hand here. So I showed you guys, this is the fork refit. I'm trying to attack the elbow. I'm going to circle that up, see? Now, this is another approach. I can get this right here. Darren, you know the hay bale. You've been using it. So if I can get it right here, it doesn't have to be, don't go crazy. This is what I'll see a lot of NFL guys doing too. They'll see it and they'll go, Ugh! they'll try to like get crazy with it. No, just sneak it in there. I'm going to show you what the hay bale looks like. So John is going to try to run me over right now. Go ahead. He can't. Why? Because I just elevated him, deflected his force. It hurts too. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so if I can just land my hand right there, that's huge. And it's not, a, again, it's not out of control. you got to drill this. If I get that hand in that position, it's a great fit for runs too, if you can find it. I like it as an add-on to any kind of fit, as a finish. I mean, shoot, if you're in the middle of a, fa a fight, let's get that hay bale, it's over. Okay, so the way we do this is like, the hand is here, I let John, what I want, the key coaching points are this. I can grab it long. I'm gonna let his force drive in, uh, into my body, okay? I'm gonna take my elbow and I'm trying to bring my elbow to my belly button. It's very important to bring it in. So even if he's off your body a little bit, I'm gonna bring it in, okay? I'm gonna bring my elbow into my belly button. That'll elevate him, okay? The next step, I wanna roll my wrist. I wanna curl it. I don't wanna start here. This is really soft and weak. You don't wanna do this. This is not good. We wanna ask John, I'm touching here. As he comes in, I'm gonna curl my wrist, okay? And the final thing, I'm gonna, and I'm also using my hips. You can tell that too, right? The hips are lifting him. But, so I can't have a big stagger with that. I can't be like here. But I have a pretty, you know, got my hips through. The last coaching point, I'm gonna take my elbow and I'm gonna run that right into his belly button. Okay, as he pushes forward, I'm trying to drive this in. Okay, and I can hop, lift him up, and sometimes it just goes right into the throat and that's a nice little add-on for him too. Just remember not to do it next time, right? 
Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Let's show you. I'm going to show you one more thing, one more tool. Because sometimes you deal with some massive people. Sometimes they're bigger than us and stronger than us. So, and this stuff works great, but maybe, maybe not. I mean, I've played against some guys. I'm like, I'm just not so sure that's going to work. Guys like the size of a bus. <laughs> so, how do I reroute them a little? I can redirect them up, but I can also redirect them out. Okay. So John's got a hand on me here. He's bull rushing me. Hop and throw. Okay, we did this yesterday. We call this a corkscrew. This is another add-on for any kind of run game stuff. When, when I got pressure, this is for two-hand pressure. Now, point, I'm a left tackle right now. I'm only going to throw this guy away from my quarterback. Don't ever throw him inside the pocket, okay? So if I'm a right tackle, I'm not going to throw him that way. Right tackle will go the other way. Hand on this pad. John's pushing me upfield. I take this hand inside hand. I lift it. Watch what I did to his shoulders. Come here, man. John's got a hand. I'll just show this part right now. Just one hand. Okay? I don't hit it. I'm just mirroring it. I'm kind of matching it like a magnet. Okay, so John's hands on. Shoulders turn. He starts bull rushing me. Push. I can launch him that way. But you want to be really careful how you do it. Again, you don't want to do it too soon. You don't want to just be like, oh, cool, I'm going to do that. Now, if you have high school kids, I don't, I don't even think you ever teach them this. Okay? Let's just get him in a stance. Let's, get him, let's learn a pass set. Let's learn some contacts and strikes, but it's more of an advanced skill so you guys can, can be aware of it. But uh, this is deflection. I got John. He's rushing me upfield. Uh, 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 I might just be round on that way as a finish for my hop. Do you guys have any questions? Concerns? Comments? Is this terrible? <laughs> okay, cool. I don't know. Anybody want to feel it? Try it? You guys, you guys got to feel it. Like you guys can do it. I don't care. I want. We're here to help, so. No. <laughs> you guys are all ready to teach this now. That was a scare, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't hurt anybody. All right, so, um, all right, cool. Well, if you don't, don't have questions, let's go on to the next technique. The snap, okay? A guy, a guy comes in to you with his head down. So think about it again, we go back to squatting. How strong are you when your head's down? Not very. We want to have our, our spine in alignment. When the guy's head's up, that's the best indicator to know. He's probably got good positioning. You want to refit and hop because you're deflecting him upward. Now, the guy wants to bull rush, which is probably the standard high school bull rush. Kid just comes down, doesn't know what else to do, just face first into you. Well, we're not going to dig that guy out. Why dig him out? It's ridiculous. Don't do it. Let's snap him down. But how do you do it? You'll see guys will just get too crazy with it. We're going to show you how to do it. John's going to take one for the team here. Well, He's going to put his hands on me. His head's down. This is an indicator. And, and you know what happens when a guy does a bull rush with his head like this? You don't have a great striking surface. It's like minimized. So I'm like, uh, uh, you still want to touch him, OK? John's got his head down. Strike here, he pushes, okay? And I'm just snapping him down, right? Yeah. So what I'm doing now is just take it back. Now we won't do we'll walk through it. Hands are high. Okay, his, his hands are a little high. See, his, his hands too high there. I don't want to raise my body. Right here, I probably will still hop even if he has his head down. His hands are a little bit lower. This is typically what happened right here. So put one, John's gonna put one foot in front of his body, okay, so he won't fall. So what I'm doing now is I have hand, I have some pressure I can give right here. Okay? What I'm going to do, I'll show you with my hands. I'm bringing them down like a wave, like a wave in a towel. The first mechanic is my lats. My lats are going to draw down. Drop the elbow down. And then you want to use your hand. You want to open your fingers to, I'll show you with one hand here. As I, I want to drop my elbow down. I want to open my fingers so I have more maximum surface area on the arm. And I want to fold at the joint. But the, the way it works is, you know, we talked about the hop. The hop is where your hips come through. The snap, we're bringing our hips back. We got to make space for this guy to go face first in the ground. So the hop and the snap are different. So the snap is like my, my hips come back behind me and we're, we're waving them down, okay? You can do that against a single arm. The hand's low, it's going here, okay? But the key is making separation in space with your body in order to feed into the ground. The other key is don't try to do this too late in the game. You know, you don't want to do this like, uh, you try to snap them down. I mean, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're in the quarterback's lap. So you can kind of identify these guys as you get better at it. You know what kind of a defender this is. I would check out my guy beforehand. I'll watch him on film. What kind of player is he? And again, I would say, I don't know, 90% of the high school kids are probably going to put their head down. When you get real scary stuff is the NFL. Some of those guys can come with their head down 
and all of a sudden, boom, they bring their hips and like you can go for a ride. So you gotta be really careful. Be really, really just succinct with it. Questions on that? The snap. They wanna try. Okay, well I guess that's all we got for you. You wanna talk, anybody wanna ask questions about pass rush moves? How do we defend certain moves? Anybody? A swim move? It's a joke. <laughs> Swim move is separation. You know, if the guy's just, boom, I want to get separation on the guy. If I'm caught in there with my lunge, I, yeah, I'm susceptible to that. You know, so, but it's another story. We're talking about sets and strikes. So if you're in good posture, you're not going to get caught with a swim usually. It's really not a great thing. JJ Watt does a little different. He'll like do these looping things and he'll kind of swim, but I don't even recommend teaching the swim. Yes? How about the long arm? The long arm, yeah, that's the number one problem, right? So, First key to, to not getting long armed is is not is not turning. Like you want to prevent first. So if uh, I'm a left tackle, John's an end. You'll see this guy vertical sets and boom, I'm a pin cushion. So we want to stay square, which everybody tells everybody to do that. Good luck. So we teach the long arm, and then if you can't prevent that from happening, then you want to deflect it before it touches you. But you'd always want to use your inside hand to deal with the long arm. I don't want to chop, so if, if uh, sometimes if John comes along, I'm gonna stab here and then chop down. I'll touch and then chop. So what, real slow, touching here, boom. Okay, boom, boom. I don't want to just take him down. Usually the long arm, the only thing keeping him up is you. So if he lands a long arm, then that becomes a single arm, corkscrew or refit. Hands on, here, John, John's pushing me back a long arm, I can reroute and deflect. Tight reroute and deflect. The hardest one is the one where he grabs your throat. Okay, so this one is tough. So what I would do against that, are you seeing that at all? He grabs your throat, we go here, lift. As he pushes in, I'm gonna try to grab for a hay bale. I'm trying to re-lift, push into me. I'm gonna try to fight him for that. That's a hard one, because he's got a good handle on you. So as long as you can pry it up and alleviate some of the pressure, you're in great shape. But I think the number one way to stop the long arm is prevention. And that's usually because guys turn. Is that, would you agree? Yeah. So. I've seen guys, Joe Thomas has uh, told me he does this, it's kind of interesting. He'll actually catch the long arm, like a catcher's man. He knows where it's coming. So he'll just kind of put it out there. But, you know, he's pretty good, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so again, with the long arm, you can, you can chop it down. Tyron Smith, great guy to watch. This is how Tyron will do it most of the time. He'll touch here, boom, boom. Boom, boom, he'll, he'll touch, disrupt a little bit, get him leaning, and then he'll chop. So, but I'd say this, if the long arm lands and it's low here, and if I have any kind of surface area to grab, I'm going to try to, I have to break the elbow, I have to get my separation. So, kind of the same principle as a snap down. So, any questions otherwise? Good.